Welcome to William Osmond's video where he updates you on what's going on in his life. How many months out of the house burning down and living at my parents' house in a motorhome? Maybe eight? We feel like stifled. This is weird. It's weird. I don't know. Let me go drop this off and then I'll try to continue this train of thought. We're, uh, this is the sinus video we have to get approved by the surgeon who did it because he loves film on the condition that we didn't just blast it to the internet without showing him first, which is completely understandable. I'll be right back. Eh. Never leave your cameraman locked in a hot car. What you were watching on the like William Osmond channel before the house burned down was a dude and a cameraman in a workshop just building stupid stuff. Everything we've made this year after the house burned down was essentially us trying to replicate or trying to continue that feeling. And you don't get the same thing. And we've gotten a lot of comments that are kind of like, they sort of bite into this fear or feeling you already have where they kind of are criticizing your channel. Like, oh, this is the end of the channel. This is not the content I subscribed for. And it like, it really hurts because we know that. We like we make the videos. We know what we're trying to do. We know what we did before. Oh my God, everyone's driving terribly today. Dude, really? What we should have done right after the house burned down was find a new place to rent. But we were trying to buy a house with this money, the GoFundMe money that like I'm uncomfortably grateful for. Like I, it's, I feel weird talking about it. We were trying to buy a house but the average house price in the city is like three times more expensive than the national average. It's, if you want to buy a house here, you're looking at spending like six hundred thousand dollars the fires are not helping the housing availability like prices are higher than they should be there's less availability we should have rented and could have immediately started rebuilding the tools uh having a shop space a workspace and and sort of bringing back what our resources were before to do all the projects. But William, why don't you move out of this expensive place? Move to Ohio where Peter lives where they pay you to they pay you money to stay there. <laughs> I don't know if it's that cheap. Um, and that's a hard question to answer. My family's here. Caretaker's family's here. She has a job here, a very good job here. And cameraman John would have to, I mean, it's like, it's a lot. I mean, is it? I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna go get a really expensive cashier's check. But what's the expensive cashier's check for, William? Well, before I tell you that, check out my spreadsheet. This is 56 rental properties that I found on Zillow and Craigslist that worked for us having roommates. The past month and a half have been the most anxiety-inducing house hunt I have ever experienced. I've never really hunted for houses before. We ended up applying, applying to 11 or 12 of those because a lot of these, the ads just stay floating up even though the place is rented or they never get back to you uh, or they lied in their ad and the house is actually a gross dump. So of those, we applied to I think 12 and we were denied or rejected or not selected by all but Two, for reasons including someone was willing to sign a longer lease than us or they didn't like the idea of roommates. So we did the only thing we knew how to do and that was spend more money because when you spend more money, you kind of enter a different tier of housing competition where you have less people fighting for houses. And so the sellers or the renters, uh, the landlords become more desperate and they're willing to put up with roommates or they're willing to put up with, what was the other thing I said? Oh, like shorter lease terms. That's what the cashier's check for is we just signed the lease on a massive house. It's expensive, but splitting it across four roommates, one of those roommates being somebody you guys probably already know, and I'm not gonna tell you right now, you'll figure it out next week, I think. We're just like, yep, let's spend a stupid amount of money and have a place to live, and hopefully, hopefully we get enough out of it that it's worth it in the long run. If not, well, this year was not fiscally a responsible year, and I need a second job. <laughs> This is the studio where we used to live. I used to poop here, right here, and it's still gone. Everything is still gone. Can you think that four or five months later, everything springs back to life, and it's not the case. If you live here, you realize that. If you're not from around here, you sort of just forget about it. It's not interesting news anymore, but everything, the apartment complex there, it's still gone. Our goal right now is to just get back into the situation we were 
before the fire took everything away. So rebuild a laser, get a CNC router, some 3D printers, where you could come up with an idea, you could model it on the computer, you could just start working on it. You have you know, all your electronic supplies, you have like wood, you have the laser cutters, you have all the tools. And so you can just like start working on something. Because currently, and the reason we haven't been making videos is because we don't, it, it's not easy to make stuff. Like you can come up with an idea, but it almost is agonizing to try and pursue the idea and build the idea. I'm not saying you need all of these tools to make stuff, but when you're making as much stuff as we do and you're trying not to waste a lot of time because we're trying to film at the same time, that's more what I mean, where it's a lot of frustration in how are we gonna do this, how are we gonna do it quickly, we just have to do a lot of it and not having the proper setup makes it more difficult. In other news, it's time for an unboxing. And my hand's going way out of frame. We have been really slow on opening these and so I'm gonna go really fast. Oh, I did not do a good job. <laughs> They're smart. They put the card on top because they know I don't read them. You've just got a little glitter bomb. It's just, it's big pieces of glitter. Well, actually, you know what? I don't care, it's not my house. Yay! I'm not usually one to fangirl. However, you are fangirl worthy. Yes. I hope you enjoy your gifts handcrafted by me. <laughs> wow, that is a lot of bees. This is adorable. Thank you, Katie and Sean. Whatever time you spent making these was absolutely worth it. Oh, we met these guys at Maker Fair. My name is Milo and I'm nine years old. My brother and I are going to share a YouTube channel called Those Guys. We met you and Peter Sripple at Maker Fair and maybe got to be in one of your videos. They were. I think they helped us cool down the hot glue on the terrible rubber duck. Thank you guys. Amazon Fulfillment Services. I don't know what it is, but it looks cool. Wire strippers. Oh, and it's got a crimper on the back too. Thank you, Ryan. This is a letter with a cat stamp and cat stickers, and I'm about to tear these cats in half. I feel a little bad. Oh, is that one getting decapitated? Oh no, it looks like we saved him. There's a drawing. It's Moldy Bread Cat. <laughs> moldy Bread Cat is from David B. And he's asking to sign one of these and send it back to him. This one I just want to get out of the way because it absolutely is a potato. It says male is spud on it and it's starting to get pretty squashy. Hello from the UK. I wanted to mail one myself, but I wasn't sure if custom lets you post potatoes. So if this has started to sprout, by the time you open it, I dare you to blend it and eat it. Well, good news is it hasn't started to sprout and I absolutely will not blend it and eat it. I don't think there's a name. It will be cherished. Oh my god, this is amazing. Thanks for coming to the Hebicon at Bay Area Maker Fair. Yours in combat, Adrian. You, did you draw this, Adrian? This is fantastic. Thank you, Adrian, for the drawing and hanging out with us. Another letter, Damon. In a way, what I have enclosed is sort of more of a gift for your keeper. Show me what you got. Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> that means Cameron John's jealousy. He wants his own. <laughs> oh, it's from the pool. Thank you very much, Damon. We're gonna have so much art to like hang up. I'm giving you my LED Arduino lights because sadly my idea project with them failed. What was your project? Uh, why didn't you write what your project was? RGB strip lights. I used to have some RGB strip lights and then they overheated. Thank you, Grace. Thank you guys. And uh, hopefully we'll have something about moving into the house next week and a sinus video next week too. I don't know how long the doctor is gonna take to approve it. I probably gotta send him a bunch of <clears throat> emails to harass him. I don't even have his email address though, so. We'll be back. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry.